Okay. We said that there is a format one, which is supposed to be a format for those instructions. Yeah. It is supposed to be a format for those instructions which do not need any operand. I think we will see some which don't need any operand. So those are assembled using format one, and they are usually a one byte instructions. They are usually one byte instructions. So you just need the opcode. Then in format two is a format which uses registers, and the opcode is the eight bits, and then each register is the four bits, the code of the register is the four bits. Then in format three is the four instructions which access memory. And we said that you have an opcode this time which takes up six bits. And then those other flags, N, I, X, B, P, E, and then a displacement. And then there is a format four, opcode again is six bits. Those six flags, N, I, X, B, P, E, and then an address, okay? And remember we said that when you are, said that when you are going to translate an instruction which is accessing memory, we usually consider format three first, okay? And for within format three, we first consider the, program counter addressing a mode. And we said that if program counter doesn't work, then we can use base. And if base doesn't work, then we can use format four. But we had started looking at instructions where we are using format three. And then we had used the program counter. So you remember this first instruction, which was the STL return address. STL return address, meaning store what is in register L. To a memory location, you call the return address. Okay, so we are going to memory. Therefore, that one is a format three instruction. Okay, so you remember, we first calculated the displacement. The displacement is usually calculated by taking the difference between the address of the operand and what is in the program counter, if you are going to use the program counter. The address of the operand, you subtract what is in the program counter, that gives you the displacement. Now in our case, you can see that return address is at a address 0030. And we also said that when you are translating an instruction, which is at address 0000, this instruction is STL return address, the program counter is already loaded with the 0003. So you subtract 0030 and you subtract 003. You said that gives you the what? That gives you the displacement, okay? Which is 02D. I hope you can see my screen. The displacement is 02D, okay? Then from there, we set the flags, we first set the flag P. The flag P is set to one because we are using a program counter. Okay. So P is set to one because we are using a program counter. Then bit C, N and I, I was explaining that those ones are also set to one because the addressing mode used is neither indirect nor immediate, okay? And then we assemble the instruction using the required format, okay? Now, 
Let us look at this other instruction. I hope you are following. Are you following? We are going to assemble another instruction. Am I with you? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. So we are trying to assemble this instruction, which is at the address 0017. I think you can see where I am. The instruction is 00 at the address 0017. It is saying jump to C loop. Jump to C loop. Now, the address of the operand, the operand is a C loop. When you check the address of the operand C loop is at 0006. I want us to have pens so that we can calculate together. Okay. So the address of C loop is at 006. And then the instruction jump to C loop is at the address 0017. So if we are trying to translate an instruction which is at the address 0017, remember we said that format is three, so long as it is a, an instruction which is accessing memory, we start by considering format three first, okay? Now format three, like you know, I don't know if you have a way to write, you remember it is opcode, then it beats N I X B P E and then a displacement. Okay. Now I remember we said that we calculate the displacement first. Now the instruction jump to C loop is at the address 0017. And remember, we said that we are going to use the program counter first. So if I am at 0017, what is the value in the program counter? Okay, very good. The value in the program counter is 001A because you remember the program counter is that register which is always holding the address of the next instruction. Okay, so if we are at 0017, the program counter is pointing at 001A. And then our operand is at 0006. And you remember we calculate the displacement by taking the address of the operand and we subtract the value in the program counter. We take the address of the operand and we subtract the value in the program counter. So this time when you subtract 0006 and you subtract 001A, what do you get? Zero 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 six subtract zero zero one a okay, so you get negative zero one four. Okay, okay, you get negative one four in hexadecimal. Very good. Now you remember. In the memory, negative numbers are stored using their tools complement format. So if you have a negative 014, what you need is to convert that value to its tools complement format. Okay, what do we do? You remember these are 12 bits. I think you can expand this 014. Remember these are hexadecimal digits. How do we translate that one to, to the complement? Negative 014. How do we 
convert it to its to the complement format. You flip the bits and add one. Very good. So let us write those bits in full. We know a zero. I hope you are writing with me. A zero hexadecimal or zero. Those are four zeros. Zero, 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 zero. A hexadecimal one. Zero, 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 one. A hexadecimal of four is zero, one, zero, zero. Okay. So we flip the bits or we interchange the bits or we invert the bits, whatever the case, and then add one. So let us invert those bits or flip those bits. Okay. You invert them. I hope you are inverting also. Okay. After inverting them, then you add the one. Then you add the one to what you have got after inverting. Okay. Can someone show me what you have got? And then maybe before you do that, then you can divide those bits into fours, knowing that every four bits, they are represented by one hexadecimal digit. So you can divide those four bits into hexadecimal digits. So what do you get? Mr. Katerega, it is not that. Remember we said that, it is a zero one for the displacement. The displacement is supposed to be 12 bits. So when you subtract, you make sure that you have got 12 bits, which is hexadecimal. Okay. Glory, I think that is it. Then you convert that to hexadecimal. You convert that to hexadecimal. Remember every four bits, that is one hexadecimal digit. Okay. So you get FEC. Very good. FEC. So that is the displacement. The displacement is FEC. Now we can go back and fill in our formula. The displacement we know is the F E C. Then what is B T E? B T E is what? We are trying to, to get the value of the flags. BTE BTE is a zero. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, you remember we said that uh, E is a zero for format three, and it is a one for format four instructions. Now remember we said that we begin with the format three instructions. So this one is a zero. How about to P? What is the value of P? P is a one, very good. Because we are using a program counter. When we are using a program counter, remember we calculated the displacement using the program counter. So P is a one and the B is a zero. Very good. How about to X? X is a zero. Very good. Because we have not done any indexing. We have not done any indexing. That is very good. 
How about to N and I? They are both one is very good because the instruction like you can see, it is not immediate, it is not indirect. So it should be one one. Now, anybody knowing the op code, can someone check for us from the operation code table? The operation code for the instruction is jump, J, jump. Okay, if it is a 3C, so jump, if it is a 3C, now when you convert that to hexadecimal, three, sorry, to binary, 3C, three, three is zero, 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 oh, sorry, zero, zero, one, one, that is a three, is that right? Then C is one, one, zero, zero. Okay, three is zero, zero, one, one. C is one, one, zero, zero. And you remember? Yes, and you remember we said you can see that those are eight bits, but the format wants only six bits. So you remember we said that the last two zeros, the zeros on the right are the ones which we delete so that we remain with what? What do we remain with? Very good. So when you convert that one to hexadecimal, 0011 is a three. Then we have some four ones next. I think that is an F. And then 0010, I hope that is a two. So the machine language instruction becomes 3F2FEC. 3F2FEC. Any question there? Do you have any question there? I'm not hearing from you. I want to continue. You give me a, 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 what, a green light for me to continue. Or if some people are stuck somewhere, can I know where? You want me to explain? I'm not hearing you people. What is wrong? Do you hear me? Okay, Francis is saying we proceed. Very good. So let us look at another example. Each of these examples we are looking at is a bit unique, so we have to be careful, okay? Gloria, we said they are not always one one. They are one one if you know they can be the formats, N and the I, you can have a zero, zero, a zero, one, a one, zero, and a one, one. No, they are not, it is not that for format three, they are constant, no. We said that they are, it, it should be a zero, one, N is a zero, I is one, if the instruction is immediately addressing. And you remember an instruction which has been assembled using immediate addressing, they usually put a hash in the front of the operand. But when you look at our instruction there, 
there was no hash. Therefore, we couldn't use one zero one. And then one zero is used if indirect addressing is used. Now with the indirect addressing, you remember I explained that there is always the ampersand sign, that sign for each yeah, in front of the operand. So if you don't have see that sign there, then the instruction is not assembled using indirect addressing. And we said that even zero zero doesn't apply because zero zero means that the values B, P, and E don't have their usual meaning. But for us, remember, we made sure that those values have their meaning because we need to tell that P is program counter, that we calculate the displacement using program counter. We don't want to hide that fact. Okay? And then we don't also want to hide the fact that E is zero because it is a format three. So for program counter, B is a zero, P is a one. We don't want to neglect that. So that is why, that's why you realize that the only option remaining is a one, one, okay? It is not a constant. When we come to look at the other instructions which are assembled using either immediate or indirect, you will see that they change. Okay, is that okay? Okay, let us let us proceed. Now there is when you look at the program somewhere, we have a statement which is saying base length. Okay. Now, when you find that statement which says base length, that statement is informing the assembler that the base value, remember we have register B, that the base value will contain the address of length, okay? And then we have an instruction which is loading that address into register B. When they say load register B with the hash length, it means that you are loading that address which is at length. The address of length is what you are loading into register B. So you should know the value in register B after that instruction. Now, if we can look at our program, if I may ask, what is the value in register B? after that instruction. Remember they are saying base length and they are saying load register B with the address of length. So what do you think is in register B? No. B1 just means, a one is just a flag that you are going to assemble using register B. Like when we put a P1, it doesn't mean that the program counter is containing a one. It just means that you are going to assemble using one, okay? So length, the address of length is 0033. So this instruction, which says the instruction at the address is 0003, you can say that they are saying load the register B hash length, and that hash means the, the address of length. So from that point, we know that our register B has got a value which is 0033, okay? So let us continue. Let us look at this instruction, which is at 10.4e. The instruction, which is at 10.4e, which says store 
what the character in the accumulator to buffer comma x store the character which is in the accumulator to a memory location in buffer comma x that means that here we are indexing meaning that maybe there is a buffer zero buffer one buffer two buffer three and so on until you get to the end of the buffer so here there is indexing index register the index register is being used now let us again try to assemble that instruction it is at 24e 24E, do you see where it is? 24E store CH to buffer comma X. It is as it is 104E. So what we do is what I explained, we have been doing that we start with the format three. You remember the format three instruction opcode n e i x b p e and then a displacement and remember we said that we calculate the displacement first okay now the displacement remember we said that we take what is in the program counter okay no if you are using a program counter we said that you subtract the address of the operand and then you subtract the value in the program counter. Remember we say the program counter is usually considered the first. So let us look at this instruction. When you are translating 10.4e, an instruction which is at address 10.4e, what is the value in the program counter? Okay, very good. The value in the program counter is 1051, because you have to remember the program counter is always containing the address of the next instruction. And the way I, what is the address of buffer? Because that is the operand. I think it is in the first program, the main program. So what is the address of buffer? Zero, zero, 0036 okay so let us get the displacement remember always the displacement is obtained by subtracting the address of the operand which is length sorry which is buffer now zero, zero, 0036 and then you subtract the value in the program counter the value in the program counter which we have said is what 1051 so can we subtract that and see what you get? Remember, we are subtracting in hexadecimal. And you're breaking, breaking, like you're not getting you so well. I'm sorry. So I'm saying that let us calculate the displacement. We are calculating the displacement, the Operand the buffer is at 0036. And we said that the value in the program counter, we said that that was 1051. So let us calculate the displacement.
Are we together? Ladies and gentlemen, are we still together? Yes, we are together. Buffer is at 0036. And we said the program counter is having 1051. So let us calculate the displacement. Hello? Ladies and gentlemen, can't we calculate, just to subtract those two numbers? They are hexadecimal numbers. Are you hearing me? Hello? Hello? Very good. Very good, Mr. Katelega. It is a negative 10, one B. Now, how many bits are those ones? That is a hexadecimal number. How many bits is it 10 one to be? How many bits does that number 10 one to be consumed? Those are hexadecimal digits and they are four. So how many bits do you have there? Sixteen bits. Very good. So if you have a 16 bits and you remember, in the format three, the displacement accepts only 12 bits. The displacement in the format three is only 12 bits. But here we have got 16 bits, which means that the program counter has failed. Which means that the program counter has failed we can't use the program counter. So you remember we said that when a program counter doesn't work, what is the next alternative? If program counter doesn't work, what is the next alternative? Are we together? Program counter, we have realized that when we subtract the value in the program counter from the value of the address of the operand, we get 16 bits. 
Okay, and the six, the displacement accepts a maximum of 12 bits. So program counter doesn't work. So what is the next alternative? We don't go to format four first. There is another alternative we use before we're going to format four. We use the best register, very good, okay? So now, instead of subtracting, instead of subtracting the, op the, the value of the program counter from the value of the operand, which is a buffer, this time we subtract the value in the base register. Not there, we don't use the program counter, but we use the base register. We said, what is the value of the base register? Does someone remember? We said the best register has, what did we say is in the best register? Okay, very good. So let us calculate the displacement. The operand is at the address 0036, and the best register has got 0033. So let us calculate the displacement. Are you calculating? I understand some, some people might have given up. Okay, we get three. So we can write that one in it because that one fits into 12 bits. We can write 003. 003, because I think that gives us 12 bits for the displacement. So now we know if we can write our formula again, our format again, opcode. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Uh, can they help me? Pardon for me the question because my network was breaking, breaking. I was asking you to calculate the displacement, and this time we were using base addressing because the program counter failed. When we used the program counter, we got a number which was bigger than the number of bits which are supposed to accommodate the displacement. The displacement is always 12 bits, but when we use the program counter, we got a value which was 10, one would be, and we realized that that was 16 bits. So we say the program counter failed, and this time we use the base. So to get the displacement, Again, you take the address of the operand, this time it is the buffer 0036, and you subtract what is in register B. Now we said that register B is holding 0033 because the instruction told us that the best register is going to be loaded with the address of length, and then we saw an instruction which loaded register B with the address of length. So we are subtracting 0036 and we are subtracting 0033. So we get the answer 003. Okay, so the displacement is 003. Now let us fill in our format. It is the opcode. Then we have N, I, X, B, P. E and then the displacement. So we know the displacement is 003. What is the BTE? Again, E is a what? E is a zero, very good. P, what is the BTP? 
P is a zero, it's very good because the program counter failed. We didn't use the program counter. <clears throat> B, B is one, very good because we have used the base. X, X is one, very good, because you see the instruction is saying, store a character buffer X. So we are using register X, we are using index addressing there. So X has to be a one when we are indexing. And then our bits N and I, N is one, I is one, very good. Now store character. What is the opcode for store character? The opcode for store character. <clears throat> if it is five or four. Okay, if it is a five or four, five is zero, one, zero, one, and a four is what? Zero, one, zero, zero. So when we knock off the other two, zero, the last two zeros, what do we remain with? I see some other people are not participating. I don't know whether they are lost and they are not saying so. So after knocking off two, because the opcode here is taking only six bits, very good. So we have zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Now, when we convert that to hexadecimal, I think you can see that zero, one, zero, one is a five. Zero one 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 is a seven, and then one one zero zero is a C. So the machine language instruction becomes five seven is C zero zero three. Any question is there? Do we proceed? Do we proceed? On how I got the machine language instruction, it is from the table. The table we saw in the previous in the previous chapter, there is a table which has got all the opcodes. It's just a matter of reading it. So if you read that table, I think you will find the store character. I don't know if I have it. Let me see.
Okay, do you see this table? I think was it Alex who was asking? This table. Okay, so when you check, I think you will find that store character. Do you see my screen? Store character, the opcode is 54. So that table, you use it. It is the table you use. You just have to know how to, to use it, to read it. Okay? So do we continue? I want a green light so that I can continue. The final answer is five, seven, C003. It is shown here. Store character buffer X, that is the, the machine language instruction. Five, seven, C003. Is it okay? We continue. So what do I mean by indexing? Indexing, you remember we said that when you are going, for example, through an array, there is usually a starting point. And then you go on the first position, the next position, the third position, and so on until you get to the last position of that array. So we call that one indexing. We put the first value, let me say, you can call it the base value in register X, and then you go to incrementing X by one, whenever you are going, let me say, through an array, okay? So that is what we call indexing. Now this instruction here, you see a store character buffer X, Okay, store character buffer X. You remember I said that if for X, there is an initial value for X, okay? So you will store maybe the first character to buffer up in the, in the array buffer position is zero. The next character array buffer position is one. X goes on getting incremented. So that is what we call indexing. Gloria, any other question? We continue? Okay, very good. So let us continue. Yeah, then there is this instruction at C loop 006, which says jump to subroutine RD rec at 0036, 0006. At C loop, it says jump to subroutine RD rec. Okay. Now, Again, we said that before you start using format four, you need to calculate the displacement first. You need to calculate the displacement first, assuming that you are in format three. And the first thing you think about is using program counter. Now here, we are, it is a jump to subroutine error direct. So when we are using that instruction, the program counter, what is the value in the program counter? We are at 0006. 
That is where there is an instruction. No, we are at 0006. Okay, so it is 00A. Okay, and where is the RD rec? RD rec, I think it is on the next screen. It is 1036. I hope everybody is seeing. RD rec is at the address 1036. So let us calculate the displacement. 1036 subtract 000A. What did you get? 10A2C, okay? So I think you can again see that that value you can't fit in the displacement if we are going to use the format three. Because 10 a 2 c those are four hexadecimal digits, which means 16 bits. And our displacement accepts only 12 bits. So that one can't work. So we say program counter has not worked. So if a program counter doesn't work, what is the next alternative? Okay, we have to use the best register now. The value in the best register I hope everybody remembers the best register has got 0033. So let us calculate the displacement again, but using this time the best register. So it is 1036, that is the address of our direct, subtract 0033. So what are we getting? One zero zero three. Again, that one is also giving us sixteen bits. So we can't use even the best doesn't give us a, a displacement. So remember, we said that when program counter fails and the best fails, then what is the remaining option? Format four, very good. Huh? It is a format four, not mod. We say format four. Okay. So format four, let us write. You remember the op, the format. We begin with the op code. Then we have our bits n i x b p e, and then the address. This time we don't have a displacement, but we have an address which has to be in twenty bits an address which is in 20 bits. Now there we are putting, we just put the address of the operand in 20 bits. So the operand is the RD rec, okay? So the address of RD rec, I think everybody can see that it is 1036. Now 1036, how many bits are those? Those are 16 bits, very good. But if the format says that the address should be 20, therefore we have to put a zero in front so that we say that the address is 0, 10, 36. So it is 0, 10, 36. That is the address, very good. Now what is the E? We are filling in, what is the E? E is a one, very good, because for format four, we say the E is a one, very good. P.
t is a zero, very good. We have not used the program counter to get the address. D. B is also zero, very good. X. X is zero, very good. We don't see any indexing there. Then N and I. Anyone? I one, very good. N is one, I is one, very good. Then the opcode of jump to subroutine. What is the opcode for jump to subroutine? It is a four eight, very good. Now let us see four eight. A four is what? Zero one zero zero. Eight is one zero zero zero. So when you knock off the last two zeros, what do you remain with? Very good. So when you write that one in hexadecimal, I think you will get zero one zero zero is a four. 1011 is a B. Then we have 0001, which is a 1. So that's why you see that the machine language instruction there is 4B1-01036. And it is a format for instruction. That's why they put the plus there. Okay, and then when you look at the addresses, the difference is not three bytes. So here we are from 0006 up to 000A. Okay, so that those are four bytes. Format for instructions are four bytes. Okay, is that okay? Any question is there? Anything you would want me to explain there? The finance is shown here. Do you see my screen? If you see the screen, the machine language instruction is here, 4B101, it is shown there. Alex, what we are, those are the machine language instructions in the last column. Okay, I am just showing you how we get those values. So it is 4B101036. Okay, any other question? Do we continue? We proceed? Do we proceed? Is it okay with you or? I see that we have only like three people who are active. The others just kept you quiet. So I don't know whether they are following or because someone is going to ask you one of these days to translate some assembly language instruction is to machine language. Any question or I proceed? Let us continue, very good. So let us look at another example. 
Let us look at this one, load the accumulator with the length, sorry, load the accumulator with the three. It is at 0, 0, 020. Okay, we, you can see this instruction, load the accumulator with the hash three, immediate value three, okay? So that one is immediate addressing, like you can see, three is not a memory location, but we are going to assemble it using format three, because it is there is an operand, you remember format one, you don't have any operand. Format to the operands are registers. So this time, since the operand is an immediate data, we are going to use the format three, all right? But there is nothing like calculating the displacement because there is no address which we are going to use. So you just write the format for format three opcode N I X B P E, and then you write displacement. Now with the immediate addressing, with the immediate addressing where we, that we have no calculation is for the displacement, the immediate operand is taken to be the displacement. The immediate operand becomes the displacement, okay? So there, what do we put there in the field for displacement? What do we put? Three, okay? But since there are 12 bits, let us write it in 12 bits. So what do we write? Zero, zero, 003 very good so the displacement is zero, zero, 003 okay e bte is a what e is a zero very good it is a format 3p P is zero, very good. We have not used the program counter when getting the displacement. B, B is a zero, very good. We haven't used the base. X, is the X a one? X is a zero. We have not used the index register to index. Remember X, we use the index register when we are indexing. Hmm? Like we did the last time, buffer X, meaning buffer one, buffer two, buffer three, and so on. So here we are not indexing. Then N and the I, Okay, very good. N is zero, I is one. Because we said if we are using immediate addressing, N is zero, I is one. And the opcode followed the accumulator. I hope everybody should have it by now is remembering that one. The opcode following the accumulator is a zero, zero. So we have six zeros there for the opcode. So, so you can now write the final answer, which is zero, 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 zero is a zero, 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 one is a one, then zero, 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 zero is a zero, and then finally the immediate value, zero, zero, three. So you can see the final answer, zero, one, zero, 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 three. Any question is there?
We continue. Okay, thank you. Let us look at another example. We have this one, load register T with 4096, LODT 4096. Okay, we at this instruction, we are now looking at this instruction, which is at the address 10.3c. It is saying a load register T with the 4096. Okay. Okay. So you can see that this is an immediate data, 4096. You see there is a hash there, which means that is immediate addressing. So if it is immediate addressing, it means there is no calculation for the displacement. So the value we have there is the displacement. Now, 4096, when you see that hash, it is usually a base 10 in number. So it is usually a base 10 in number, but you remember the address has to be 20 bits, which means binary number, binary digits. So when you convert 4096 to binary, what do you get? 4096 is in base 10. When you convert it to binary, what do you get? Okay, so how many bits do you have there? Okay, maybe you are right. Okay, but now remember the address is taking 20 bits. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, maybe before you come to that, you realize that these are 13 bits now. Is that right? Now we can't use the format three. We can't use the format three because the format three stops at 12 bits. Therefore, we just go for format four, which can take 20 bits. So we add some zeros there. Okay. We add some zeros to make it 20. And when you convert to hexadecimal, what do you finally get? You add some, I think, how many zeros? The seven zeros in front. And then we convert it to hexadecimal. So what are we getting? Okay, very good. So that is the address now. Our address, because now we are not talking about the displacement, it is the address 0100 because those are 20, the 20 bits. Okay. 010000. Okay. BTE. What is BTE? BTE is a one P. P is a zero B. 
B is a zero, X. X is a zero, then any and the I. Zero one, very good. Immediate addressing, N is zero, I is one. Then the opcode for load register T, LODT. What is the opcode there? 74, so let us see seven is zero, one, one, one. Then four is zero, one, zero, zero. So when we knock off the two bits on the right, what do we remain with? Very good. So when we convert to hexadecimal, that means we get zero, seven, five, one, then is zero, one, zero, zero, zero. That is how you get this answer here. Seven, five, one, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. And the question is there. Please, if there is something you don't get, kindly ask. So we proceed. Gloria, we said that with the immediate addressing, with the immediate addressing, the operand is the displacement if you are in format three. Now, when we try the format three first, the operand, which is 4096, I said that is a best 10 number. When you convert it to binary, you get 1000. Zero, zero, zero. So you get a number which is more than 12 bits. So that's why we abandoned format three and went for format four, which takes 20. So when you convert 4096 to binary, you get, I think, 1000. Okay. Then, but because we want to put it in 20 bits. That's why we add there another hexadecimal of zero. So that we have five hexadecimal digits, each one of four bits. That's how we get that is zero, one, zero, zero, zero. It is coming from 4096. But if it is more than 12, then we use the format four, which takes 20, which takes an address to be 20. And this time we don't have an address because it is immediate data. Is it okay now, Gloria? Okay, any other question? Any other question? Do we continue? Please give me a green light to continue.
what is the problem? When you convert 4096, I'm saying that is the best turning number. When you convert it to binary, what do you get? Or if you convert it to binary and then to hexadecimal, convert it to binary and then to hexadecimal. Or you convert it to hexadecimal directly. 4096, you can convert it to hexadecimal. It is a best 10 number. When you convert it to hexadecimal, what do you get? I think from best 10 to any other best, you're going to dividing by that best. So 4096, you start dividing by 16 by 16. Then someone talks about repeat about knocking off the op code. What should I knock off? Brian, I think you haven't been following. We are about to complete the examples. I don't know how many examples we have done, but you have been keeping quiet. Remember these op codes, they are given using hexadecimal digits. And there are two hexadecimal digits. When you change them to binary, you get eight bits. But the format, format three and the format four, the opcode accepts only six bits, which means that two bits have to be knocked off in order to be accommodated. The opcode should be six bits, not eight. But what you read from the table of opcodes, the table has got two digits, which are hexadecimal. Those are eight bits. So I said that when you, conv you convert those eight bits to binary, the last two zeros on your right are the ones which you will usually knock off and you remain with the first six bits. Is it clear now? Very good. Any other question? Any other question? Do we continue? Okay, thank you. I would love it if some other people said or they wrote something. Let us translate this one, the instruction which is at 0003, load register B with the hash length, load register B with the hash length. Okay. Now, when you look at that instruction, when you look at the operand, the operand combines the two features. Length is an address, and then the hash is means immediate. So it means that we need again to calculate the displacement because there is the address of length there. But when we start filling in the bits, we have to remember that it is immediate addressing. Okay, so you, we are at 0003 and the length is at 001033. So what is the displacement? You remember we usually start with the format three. 
So what is the displacement? Length is at 0033, and then LODB is at 003, okay? Okay, I think that is correct because when you are at 0003, remember we said we use the program counter first. Program counter, the program counter, when you are at 0003, the program counter is containing 0006. So you get that difference, 0033, you subtract 0006, and then you get 02D. So 02D is the displacement. Remember, we write only 10 because we need the 12 bits. So it is 02D. Is that okay with everybody? Okay. Then let us fill in the other bits. E. E is a zero P. P is a one, very good, because we have used the program counter to calculate the displacement. B, B is a zero, very good. X. X is zero, very good. Any and the I. I is one, very good. N is zero, very good. Because it is immediate addressing. Then the opcode for load register B. Someone reading the table for us. 68. So if it is a 68, 6 is a 0, 1, 1, 0. And then 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0. Knock off the last two zeros. And you remain with what? 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay. So when you convert that one to hexadecimal, I think we will get a six. A six, a nine, two, then a zero, two D. Okay, so you get this machine language instruction. Six, nine, two, zero, two D. Is that okay? Okay, then let us look at the last example. This instruction, which is at 002A, which is at 002A, jump to return address. And they are you putting there that ampersand sign to indicate indirect addressing. Okay, so. As usual, format three is considered the first opcode, N, I, X, B, P, E, and then a displacement. So can we calculate the displacement? What is the displacement there? When we are at 002A, Remember the program counter is at 002D. And then return address is at 0030. 0030. 0, 0, 0. Okay. So you subtract 0030 0, 0, 
and you subtract 0, 0, 2D. So you get three, I think you put that into 12 bits and you write 0, 0, 3. Is that okay? Okay. Then it bit E is a what? E is a zero, but I go to P. P1, very good to B. B0, very good to X. X. Hello, you are hearing me? 